Book of Genesis, chapter 12. The Call of Abram. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah, Morah, sorry, to the oak of Morah. At that place, no, sorry. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west, and Ai on the east. I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's Ai, but I don't presume it's pronounced Ai. And I on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Abram and Sarai in Egypt. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there for the famine. Oh, got to read that again. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are a woman of beauty. I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And when the princess and when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to the Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into the Pharaoh's house. And for her sake he dealt well with Abram, and he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife, take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. So, Here we are told about the story of Abram and how God had called upon him to go to a different land. Oh. And not only to go to a different land, but so that God could bless Abram and make his name great. God had said that he will bless those who bless Abram. So those who are in good, those who at the time were good to Abram, God would be good too. And then the uh, journey into Egypt. It's very interesting that because of how beautiful Abram's wife Sarai was, he actually feared dying and being murdered because the, he thought like the Pharaoh would kill him so he could steal his wife. But in the end, it ended up with Abram's plan 
cursing the pharaoh and causing like great plague yeah it says here but the lord afflicted pharaoh and his house with great plagues so because of the fact that abram had lied and then he lied about sarai being his sister so pharaoh believed that he could marry sarai but because he had tried to steal a married woman and marry her himself it ended up coming back to him and haunting him and cursing his household with plagues I think that's everything I can really get out of this. Like, hmm. Because I can't remember if Abram ends up becoming Abraham. So I don't really know, like, what I can really say here. I'll probably end up coming back to this once we get to Abraham. If it turns out that Abram and Abraham are the same person. Oh, no. You know, I'm going to read ahead a bit. Alright, yeah, yeah, so, Abram is Abraham. So here we see God blessing Abraham, who is very much considered, like, one of the most important figures in the Bible. Because Abraham is essentially the birthplace of Christianity. And, like, I could be wrong in saying that, but I feel like that's true. Like, I feel like... A lot of people would hold that to be truth. So, here we see that God has made himself known to Abraham and has blessed him with a great nation. And you know, like, obviously the nation that God is talking about is heaven. It's the nation of Christianity. It's the nat nation of Christians. So, because of Abraham trusting in the Lord, we have Christianity. We have what we have nowadays. And that is why Abraham's name is so great, right? That's also probably why the Lord cursed the Pharaoh and plagued his household because the Pharaoh had dishonored Abraham and God wasn't gonna just let that slide obviously so yeah like I was a little bit lost on what to say there but now I know that Abram is the same person as Abraham so that's gonna make the next few chapters like a lot easier to talk about so yeah uh, if you have any thoughts of your own, uh, please make sure to put them down in the comments. Uh, you know, let's get a discussion going. And, uh, yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is, and have a blessed day.